It is the first of a new month, so as usual, the NSDA has released the public forum topic for the upcoming month. The public forum topic for the month of May will be resolved nations with territorial claims in the Arctic Circle should sign a treaty suspending polar development. This was the topic area that won out in the polar development topic area. Of the two, I think it was definitely the better wording, though kind of counterintuitive, because even though the topic area is polar development, and this one pro is against it and con is for it, but at least it's not set up in a way that basically asks, should we fight Russia or not, which makes it the lesser of the two evils, which is also kind of common with public forum topics. So... This is probably the least used month of the year. Even though TOC is in May, they have always stated in their invite that they're going to use the April topic and not the May topic. Theoretically, NCFL Grand Nationals is going to announce their own topic later this month that they will also use in May. So really, it's going to be mainly small tournaments unless there's something big going on behind the scenes with Catholic Nationals getting their topic system standardized and bringing it more on board with the way that every other month and every other tournament does topics with public form, which would be interesting to see, but at the same time, I'm kind of skeptical that it's going to go far. I suspect it's going to mostly be small local tournaments, which also, of course, means no polar development at NSDA Nationals. So, part of what makes this topic interesting is that for the past decade or so, Russia has publicly made polar development a priority. They've said they want to turn the Arctic into a resource base for the 21st century. Now, there's a lot of mineral deposits and a lot of oil there, but I'm going to get into the arguments in a second. I want to look at the wording a little bit before then. So, it says nations with territorial claims in the Arctic. That's not necessarily a question of geography, it's a question of politics. Does a nation say that it owns part of the Arctic? If so, does it count in this? Is there any point in trying to restrict this on pro? Probably not. Can Khan counterplan that all nations should do this? Probably not. I'm not sure what benefit they would get out of it necessarily, unless it's the fact that the treaty isn't just between those nations, But again, that's something that deals more with how it's modeled in previous instances with previous regions of the world. We'll talk about Antarctica when we get to there. It does definitely include Russia. It definitely includes China. It definitely includes the United States. It definitely includes Greenland. Other nations are kind of up for grabs. One could make the argument that various Scandinavian countries or even that the United Kingdom should be included in this because of some of their operations north of the North Sea. But again, those are the big three. So really, a lot of this would probably end up following the model of the Antarctic Treaty, which freezes territorial claims, bans military action, and places a moratorium on research extra- resource extraction in those areas, It allows for collaborative research, but requires the consent of multiple countries to work in areas. It also kind of partitions out zones in a way that isn't as practical in the Arctic Circle, which doesn't have land mass per se. So, when we look at this topic, we're probably going to be looking at a few things. Causing or avoiding conflict is the first big issue. And what you're going to see with this is basically... It's a place that authors have been talking about Russia-U.S. conflict for ages, Canada not so much. This becomes relevant when you look at Russia's funding nuclear icebreakers to attempt to get to oil deposits. The way the international law is currently set up, mineral deposits, oil deposits, belong to the nation that can prove they're connected to its continental shelf and extends from there into international waters. Very often, there is a case to be made that a line could be drawn from either nation's continental shelf, but whoever draws it first, maps the seafloor first, can stake that claim. So there's definitely an incentive to get there first and to use resources before they can be contested and start exploiting them before somebody else can start to challenge it. There's all sorts of debate about whether or not introducing a new source of oil and further lowering global prices would be good or bad, both for the countries that do it and for global markets. 
beyond just mineral extraction and oil extraction, there's also issues with the ecosystem there. Admittedly, most people don't think of the Arctic as a vibrant ecosystem, but it is certainly a unique ecosystem and a fragile ecosystem. One of the major risks people talk about to the environment in the context of polar development is a below ice oil spill. If people are drilling underneath an area that is permanently frozen over and oil spills up, obviously the oil stops below the ice and spreads much, much farther than it otherwise would, with consequences for any wildlife that would come up for air under any holes in those ice, or even that just lives in the water shallowly below the ice and relies on that. So at that point, there's really no proven safety technology that helps with those kinds of spills, and that's definitely a concern to keep in mind. Another thing to look at here is just the idea of can these actually be honored? Will these treaties actually matter? And that's definitely a question that is up in the air. In Russia's case, it's probably the what if they cheat question. Not that the US is great at honoring international law, but Russia's publicly said that when these laws conflict with his national interests, it won't. Either country could potentially violate it. The question is what would the consequences be other than other countries also violating it and maybe slightly accelerated version of the status quo. A couple things that could come up as con options because of this are whether this is going to be something that affects all nations or whether this is something that affects just these nations. Should it be done through the UN? Should it be something other than a formalized treaty? Should it be limited to nations with territorial claims? A lot of con arguments are also going to fall into the case-by-case -case category. We should have environmental protections in the Arctic, but not over the whole thing. We should prevent most nations from doing this, but not this one in this place. We should ban military operations here except for these two. Things like that, that basically allow Khan a little wiggle room. Pro will point out the word all is not in the resolution, but it's still an area where there could be some clash because Khan does not have to advocate that nothing should be changed, that anything that could be done in the Arctic should be done. It's simply a question of whether this treaty as a blanket solution is good or bad. The other thing too is it kind of becomes a question of when. And by that I mean, because the resolution says suspending, that doesn't mean permanently ending, it's not the same thing as banning. That creates a situation where if polar development could happen at some point in the future, Pro doesn't have to argue against that as long as they can show what the point of change has been. So Pro can say, we should suspend it right now, but Khan can challenge Pro to answer the when, to make them show well, what will we need to do for this to change? Should we suspend it until we have better safety technology? If so, when will that be? Should we suspend it until Russia and the US reach better relations? If so, how do we know that will happen? When do we think that will be? And the idea that Pro can claim benefits off of doing this eventually and then weigh those against Khan's benefits of doing this now is a framework debate that is just waiting to happen. Other than that, the most important issues in this are probably going to be the fact that debates in May are actually all using the April topic, and the April topic video will be out tomorrow, but was not coming out on the 1st of April for reasons. Happy April 1st, everybody.